Hello, everyone. My guest today is Colin Day. He's the chairman and CEO of a company called iSims, which he founded in 2000 with a vision to deliver applicant tracking software, emphasizing ease of use and an unparalleled customer service. iSims is the largest standalone provider of talent acquisition software in the industry and stands among Forbes' top 100 fastest growing private cloud companies in the country. Colin, are you ready to take us to the top? I'm ready. Happy All to be with you. I'm excited you're here. So the largest standalone provider is a big word. You're a measurement guy. How do you measure that? How do you know you're winning? <laughs> uh, we do it by customer base. I mean, you can take a look at revenue. You can take a look at growth rates. For us, it's customer base. So uh, we get pretty good real-time data about who uses what in our industry. Um, and uh, so, yes, we're, we're the largest standalone provider. Uh, we're actually number two to Oracle, who bought a company called Taleo. Uh, but we're feeling really good about our odds of uh, hopefully surpassing them as well. And where are you today in terms of customers on the platform or using the platform? Uh, so we're a little uh, north of about 3,500 companies. Okay. And tell us what that means for folks not familiar with the product. What are they using you for? You bet. Um, so the we, we sell something called a talent acquisition suite. Uh, a TA is honestly just a really fancy word for recruiting. So <laughs> we are... Uh, Enterprise software that you put in place to manage your recruiting operations. Uh, it usually starts with, a, we sort of have a bedrock product that you put in first, and that's our applicant tracking system called Recruit. Okay. Uh, and then if you're uh, looking to get a little bit more progressive and not just do what a lot of recruiters can do, which is a sort of post and pray methodology, uh, you can put in marketing automation to build up sort of passive candidate talent pools. You can put in onboarding components to complete the transaction. And should we think of your business model? I mean, is this, is this a SaaS model or is this you're taking a percentage of first year salary of placed folks? How do you make money? It is purely a SaaS model. Oh, wow. Um, so, so we actually, uh, we started in 99. We didn't even know what SaaS was. It wasn't even called <laughs> you SaaS. You invented SaaS. Then. Come on, Colin. Just take credit for uh, it. I will not take credit for that. No, <laughs> I think probably Benioff gets way more credit yeah. than get for that. But uh, um, no, we, uh, we started pure SaaS, kind of one platform, one code, one version. And we've stuck to that, you know, all the way through. And, and so... What are, again, give us a sense, you said you had many, many products. The product that most of them start with, is it the tracking, applicant tracking software? It really is. That's, that's the bedrock of recruiting that helps you manage all your position openings, that, that, that sends it through approvals, gets it posted, brings in the point of application, schedules the interviews, uh, and also handles a lot of the, the compliance uh, around recruiting, uh, tracking EEO data, etc. What's so, EEO uh, mean? Uh, it's equal employment opportunity uh, data, so race, gender, veteran status, etc. And what is the? Uh, I imagine you have a variable, a multitude of different price points for that. But on average, what does somebody pay to start using you through that software? It really varies. So we actually support customers of just about every size. Uh, we tend to see recruiting become really, really important probably after you hit 100 employees. Um, we have seen some below 100 employees, but. Uh, I think after 100 employees, you start getting to scale. Depending on your growth rates, you're, you're really thinking about the next level. Mm -hmm. um, so we have price buckets that make sense for the, the smaller end of the market versus the mid market versus the very high end of the market. So um, it can start as low as, you know, call it 500 a month and it can go up to six figures a month. Got it. And then talk to me about, uh, I want to learn more about the founding story now that we have a little bit of the context of what the business does. So you said you founded this in, you said 99? Uh, yeah, 99. The hell, that's a hell of a year to found a software company. Uh, yeah, tell me about it. What was going uh, through your head? <laughs> um, so, so I always sort of say I, I fell into it ass backwards. Uh, there, there, was, <laughs> there was a lot of luck involved, but um, I, uh, I uh, graduated from Cornell with a degree in psychology. Uh, I just wanted to do something entrepreneurial, and I got pulled into a recruiting staffing firm as my first job. Um, I knew nothing about technology, but they said, all right, you're going to be hiring you know, developers, testers, DBAs for Bell Labs. Uh -huh. um, so uh, my, my, my first clients were here in New Jersey, which is where we are headquartered. Um, and, uh, yeah, worked as a recruiter. Um, I was always antsy to try to figure out, you know, gosh, how do, how do I parlay this into starting a business? Um, and the reality is, and I think this is the case for many entrepreneurs, it, it was just staring me in the face. I was logging into this proprietary system that the company I was with had built. Uh, they were called Comrise and okay. their system was called Comrise's information management system. So they called it SIMS. 
Um, and uh, yeah, one day just woke up and I said, you know, what have I been doing? It's, it's, it's staring me in the face every single day. So uh, I think I was 23 at the time and I went to their CEO and I said, you know, this is going to sound crazy, but what if we buy the rights to your software? We spin it out. We start our own company. Um, and he was totally on board. Uh, and that's that's what we did. We, we, we threw a little red eye and a dot com. Uh, and then, as I'm sure you can imagine, about three years later, we couldn't drop the dot com portion of it fast enough. So. <laughs> what it was 99 the year you start up the company or, or the year when you were 23 when you negotiated to buy the company out? Yeah. So I started as a recruiter in 97. I was, I was 21 when I graduated. So I worked for as a recruiter for a couple of years before I started iSIMS um, at, at, at 23. So uh, uh, I didn't have a lot of you know, knowledge to go on. I think that was probably a good thing. I think if I'd uh, probably had more experience, I would have talked myself out of trying to do it because it's, it's just such a competitive market. It well, always has. How that. did you, well, so Colin, first off, amazing story. I imagine there's a lot of other 23 year olds listening right now that are frustrated with the company they work in, but they see something inside the company they would love to spin out, but they're going, I've only had a salary of 80K for two years. I'm still paying off college debt. I have no savings. How on earth am I going to going to negotiate this piece of technology to spin out? How would you do it? Um, you know, I look back and I wonder, I, I had someone who trusted in me. Um, I would have said believed in me, but I didn't, I didn't have a lot of history with him to believe in. But, uh, uh, the individual that ran Comrise technology, uh, I could the only CEO. imagine the CEO of Comrise, the, the technical staffing firm I was with, I, I can only imagine what must've been going through his mind when this sort of brash 23 year old walked in the room and said hey i've got an idea for a business is that uh, what you did you just walked in the office and said either fire me or let me buy this part of the company i don't think it was probably saying either fire me <laughs> I, I don't think i was ready for that moment but uh um definitely said hey listen i think we've got something here um and uh my gosh she he was so supportive well how, I mean, how'd you I value it though like like, talk to me about the economics of that deal. Like, did you pay him an amount of money for it? Did he just give it to you and keep a chunk for himself? I mean, oh, there's a crazy story behind that portion of it. But, uh, you know, all, all I knew, I didn't even know how to, hey, make me a CEO, give me a CEO salary. I didn't negotiate for equity early on. Um, it, it really was very much just, I see an opportunity. I want to run for it. Um, I will need to buy the software. So we did that at a very, you know, we, we created a very low value of the software to, to do that transaction. Did you use your own money or did you figure out how to raise money from other investors? We literally did it all through a loan. So I not only said, hey, I need to get the technology out, um, but I need you to give me all the money to buy the technology from you. Oh, he um, was the, he loaned company. you the capital. You didn't have to sign a personal guarantee with the bank. He loaned the capital. Oh, wow. That's um, great. So, when you talk about really having a patron behind you, I mean, he, he, he really was. So, uh, um, and then, uh, yeah, I'm sure you can imagine come 2001 and 2002, uh, yeah, things, well, things turned a bit did harrowing. You, did you have leverage at this point? Like, was the business already feeling the 99 kind of bust? And you said, before this thing goes bankrupt, maybe I can try and pull an asset out of it. Or were you not, was that not the state of mind you were in? No, it was the opposite. Um, we were in high times. So when, so when I was working as a recruiter, we, we could not find enough technology people fast enough. They, they even sent me over to India wow. uh, to, to just recruit out of India and try to bring people back. Um, so it, it was a heyday when we, and when we uh, uh, sort of spun out. Um, and it was only after that that everything started to sort of gloriously fail. And real quick, before we move and we fast forward to today, just so those fo young folks listening right now, in case they're trying to maybe mimic your success inside their own companies, I mean, are we talking a loan amount that was like above 100 grand, like in the millions or below 100 grand? I mean, what size risk were you taking here? Um, so, I mean, it really was a loan over time. So, so, so you know, sort of think that the first two years of our existence, I called them payroll loans, which was basically every two weeks I would call them up and I'd say, hey, here's the staff we have and how much I need to pay. And I, I, I would joke that I'd sort of sweat bullets while, while I waited for the wire transfer and then walk out and tell everyone that they were getting paid that week. Oh, uh, so you would tell him that he, you didn't actually get the cash. He would wire you money as you needed it. It was sort of bridged as, as needed. I would call up and get the cash. And it, it, it was to the tune overall over about two years of about two and a half million dollars. Okay, Got it. And, and why? And besides just you being a nice guy, right? And him love, you know, there was some camaraderie there. What I mean, what was he getting for this? Did he keep a portion of the company? Do they still own a part of the company today? Or was there interest or what? 
Um, so, uh, yeah, looking back, I did not negotiate equity up front. We had to do that later on. After Uh-oh. we started, started seeing some success. So there's, there's probably a lesson to be learned there. But, uh, um, so, you know, he, he, I, I was just thrilled, honestly, to be a 23 year old CEO starting my own company with, with capital and, uh, um, in 99. So, yeah. In, in 99. <laughs> what, what was your, do you remember what your first year, by the way, was it a monthly recurring business model back then or has that evolved? It was a monthly recurring business model back then, and it was really hard to get going because you know we don't we didn't have Amazon Web Services, we didn't have all Stripe. These, uh, yeah, yeah, oh gosh, amazing resources that make it a lot more capital efficient to start. Um, so yeah, a lot of it was building out a data center, sort of all the things we knew we needed to do before we even got a customer. What was your what was that first year revenue? Do you remember? It, it was pathetic. Tell I, me how pathetic. <laughs> how pathetic was it? This will help other people get excited about doing their own thing. I think we were thrilled to have probably about, I don't know, 80,000 or something. I mean, <laughs> hey, it's absolutely a, tiny. It's a great like, start. Yeah. All right. And, so fast forward to today. What's the team size there in New Jersey? Sure. Uh, so we are about 650 people. Um, and 90% of them are in our headquarters in New Jersey. Okay. Um, with the irony being that we are actually moving uh, in November to the old Bell Labs headquarters. Oh, wow. Is, uh, where I originally started recruiting for. So uh, there's a sort of come full circle story there. That is pretty funny. So, okay, so about 650 folks based there in New Jersey. And besides that first about $2 million loan, have you raised capital or have you bootstrapped since then? So something we're really proud of, and and uh, you know, it took me a while to learn about raising capital and you know what kind of capital and uh, primary versus secondary, etc. Um, we honestly like to say that we have gotten to where we have with no one's money really going into the business. So that original loan was paid back in full with interest, mm-hmm. um, and then we have since brought in a private equity part, a growth equity partner called Susquehanna. Um, but all of that was was secondary. It was liquidity. Um, we actually were were growing really well, and we were able to say them to them, you know, guys, we don't need the cash. We're pretty profitable. But uh, if you were to help with a liquidity event, uh, we'll 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 you know ratchet up the risk and put more of the uh, the bottom line into the wait. Uh, the growth sh- of the firm. Colin, I'm not following that. What do you mean? Do they actually put capital in for a percentage of equity? Uh, help, uh, help me understand that again. You bet. So, so yes, they took a percentage of equity, um, but all the capital went out. It, it went to liquidity. It went to the original owner. Got and myself. it. Got um, it. So, so it didn't actually go into the business. It was an operational the, cash. It wasn't operational. Yeah. No. So, so we still like to make the claim that yes, despite the fact that we do have a growth equity partner, we feel like we've we've done everything uh, using our own our own operating. Got model. it. So that all the money they put in it was pure liquidity. None of it went in operations. Yep. Got it, it. guys. I, I just have to highlight this real quick, guys, because I don't get the opportunity to do this a lot. There are so many ways to create wealth for yourself as an entrepreneur when you're building a business and taking risk besides selling to some big company. This is one way to do it, right? Where you get an outside investor and, you know, I'm making this up. I don't know what Colin's numbers are. Colin, I'd love for you to share them, but I'm going to guess you're not. But let's say the private equity folks put in 20 million bucks and he's going to say, okay, we'll give you 10% equity for that, but you're actually buying 10% of my 60% that I own, right? So Colin yep. can pocket that. Is that how the dynamics works, Colin? You, you got the dynamics right. And okay. We actually did, we did two bites of the apple. So Susquehanna, our partner, has come in uh, six years ago with one investment, and they followed it up last year with another. And how do you, so like one of my things in life is like you can't expect someone to work hard for you after you make them rich. It's kind of why like earnouts rarely work and like some of these things rarely work. It seems to be working for you. You seem excited about being there. You've already made capital from this. Like, how do you in your brain keep keep excited about going forward after you already have had a payday? Yeah, sure. Um, I, I don't know what it is. I've got this like innate desire to win. And so I always try to create a... <laughs> I never want to see a scenario where we say we've won. I always want to create a scenario where, where winning is, you know, three to five years further out. Uh, so... I, I think we looked squarely at the marketplace and we said, uh, you know, what's going on in our market is is that recruiting, unfortunately, uh, in many cases, is getting sort of thrown into an ERP suite as a sort of afterthought of, hey, we'll give you yep. everything. And by the way, if you want recruiting, um, our premise is that is too important to screw up to put through an ERP. I mean, that is your front of the funnel. You 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 can't hire people. You hire bad people. You're 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 screwing with your business. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so, uh, yeah, I think our, our mandate is to convince the world to be contrarian, not, not go get an add on from your, uh, HRIS payroll or ERP, uh, but go get best in breed. Um, so while we're the sort of number one best in breed vendor, uh, we still have some enormous, uh, competitors in the ERPs that we would love to dethrone. If Larry comes to you and writes you a $200 million check today to sell the business, do you sell? Uh, only if I get his yacht as well. <laughs> you are competitive. I like it. All no, right. I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. I, honestly, that, that would be a long, hard thing. I, I, we want to leave the company in a position where we say whatever it is, it, it will be the definition of kind of winning the industry. Yeah. I mean, the question I have for a guy like you, how old are you? I'm 41. Yeah, so like you look at a guy like Elon Musk, like right, he was really good at like early, early creating momentum. He so he created an agency, sold it, but no one ever talks about this. But that's what allows him to go put that capital at risk going to space. So like the yeah. risk for a guy like you is only time, right? The more time you spend trying to solve like the recruiting problem, the less time you solve to the less time you have to solve to take bigger risks with all the capital that you've made, and those could be really life changing. I mean, er, I mean, hiring obviously is really important, but you could go after even bigger things. How do you manage that balance in your brain? Ah, just try to stay focused. It's it's probably been my greatest strength. I'm sure some people would say my greatest weakness too, but I've been told for 17 years, hey, you got to get on, you got to expand, you got to move to the next, you got to, you know, follow the industry trends. And I don't know, we've always just sort of said, no, I, I feel like it's the opposite. Be the contrarian, keep focusing, do what we're doing better than anyone else. And I think we've proven that focus works. Um, you, you got to be, we call it, you know, the 10X factor is what people have written about. If you're going to you know, bite off a piece and say, that's what I'm focusing on, you, you better do it 10 times better than anyone else. You, you can't be two or three times better. Yep. few economics questions here before we wrap up with the Famous Five Con. What are you paying to acquire new customers? What's your CAC? Oh, gosh. Um, it, it really will depend on the, the segment that we go after. So we're taking different approaches. On average, uh, so what would you say? Um, we have a, well, taking the return, the CAC plus the CLTV, we, we typically, uh, break even on a deal in year two. Okay. In year two. So you have a, about a 12 month payback period and, and what's yeah. the average annual contract size? Um, when you average it all out, I, I would say that right now it's probably about 30,000 a year. Okay. So you, you're spending, call it 60, right? On the folks, uh, 60 grand to get them. You get paid back in those first two years. That creates a pretty significant cash gap because the, the, Acquisition cost goes out. I mean, I imagine all up front. How do you manage that gap? Uh, I think you know we've just had to do it the old-fashioned way because we're not raising gobs of money that we can sort of spend through. Um, we literally just have to model it out to say a certain amount of cash is going to have to go out each year um, via marketing. Um, so that is just modeled in um, to to the business. So you always have a buffer that you know is lar larger, basically, than a two-year buffer. That would be what we're going for. Yeah. 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 Awesome. And then can I do, you said the average contract value is about, about 30 grand. So again, if I do divide that to 12, get it monthly, it's about 2,500 bucks. Can I take 2,500 times your number of customers to kind of back into MRR? Or is there any reason that math would be wrong? If you are good enough to do that multiplication real time, <laughs> I, I, um, it'd be about, I, it'd be about 8.7 million bucks monthly, 3,500 times 2,500 bucks per month. So, so we're, we're north of that. North of that. All right, good stuff. Let's wrap up here, Colin, with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Uh, I, I feel like it's a little boring, but uh, Good to Great by Jim Collins literally laid the foundation of our business. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? I got to say between two, I'm, I'm enthralled by Satya at Microsoft and the turnaround that he's, he's putting together. Um, but I got to say, if you're in SaaS, you got to look at Benioff as the example of how do you keep that growth going? Do they have a recruiting platform built into their, their system yet? They don't. They've really stayed focused on on kind of the, the front operations of marketing, selling, servicing. Um, so I don't know if they've done a deal with Workday to say, you stay out of my world, we'll stay out of your world, but we, we haven't seen them in recruiting. Number three, is there a favorite online tool you have, like Acuity Scheduling? 
I'm going to give you the most boring answer in the world, but I, I just live in, I, I live in 365 for Microsoft, honestly, from task management, calendaring, email rules. You're really, posi- like- you're really positioning yourself for a Microsoft exit here. You got your favorite CEO, your favorite tool. <laughs> 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 All right. Last for you, Colin. How many hours of sleep do you get every night? How many hours of sleep? Oh, um, it is getting a lot better. I have a, a five-year-old daughter, a seven-year-old son, and, uh, so I'm finding that, you know, I'm getting up to about eight hours, which I'm pretty proud of. It did not used to be that way. That's pretty good. So just to confirm your situation, married, two kids, 41 years old, that right? That's right. All right. Yeah. So last question, take us back 21 years. What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? I just think it's trust your gut and trust your instinct. I, I, I feel like I've had 17 years of having people tell me what they think is happening in the industry, what they think the competition is doing. Uh, don't listen too hard to the outside forces. Trust trust the gut. There you guys have it from Colin, who he had the foresight back in 99 when he was 23 to go to his CEO and say, hey, man, I want to spin this, this little hiring system we have out into its own company called iSims. That was in 99. Fast forward, and he did that on a $2 million loan that was funded by that CEO. Fast forward to today, their team is 650 people based up in New Jersey, working with over 3,500 paying customers, paying on average a $30,000 per year ACV. Obviously, they're their cohorts and their segments of customers differ greatly. They're doing more than about 8.7 million bucks in monthly recurring revenue with about a two-year payback period, again, focused really on helping folks find talent, manage talent, and onboard talent in a cost-efficient and effective way. Colin, thank you for taking us to the top. Uh, It's been a pleasure. Thank you.